Good evening, and welcome to the Doris Hall James Indie Show. Today our featured guest is Al Chestnut from the Chestnut Brothers. Hi Al, how are you? I'm fine, Doris. How are you doing, sister? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> how have you been? Uh, blessed by the best. Blessed by the best. Well, it's certainly glad to have you sitting up here with me this evening. It's a pleasure to be here. As we have this conversation about your career, from the beginning of your career to the present. Okay. Okay. It's always new things. Every artist that comes on the show has different different things to present to the show. And these things help inspire others. And then they don't know a lot about you, you know? They mm -hmm. don't know a lot about the artists, okay? And when we get on here, they'll say, oh, I didn't know he did this, and I didn't know he, he did that. Right. And it's just making the art, m m making everyone aware of all your contributions to the music industry and to the music world. I so I want to thank you for coming on the show. Oh, okay. I appreciate the invitation. Now, <laughs> the spotlight is on you, okay? okay. So we want to start from the beginning of your career. And I know you were born in uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. You were born in South Carolina. Right. And that's where my parents was born, were born Columbia. I worked in Columbia, South Carolina. Get up. As a, um, a principal down there years ago. Cool. I worked there. Okay? All right. Um, and then you came to Philadelphia. At what age did you come to Philadelphia? Uh, moms and pops migrated to Philly when I was I was only two years old. Oh, you were two years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. don't know that much about, you didn't know that much about Columbia, South Carolina. Moms would take us back every summer from the age of two until I was about 10. Okay, okay. But I didn't really get a chance to familiarize myself with the environment uh -huh. until I was grown. Okay, okay. You know, and um, it was like Kunta Kente mm -hmm. and Roots. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, just to see so many of my people. I probably, it, was a, I, it was a very, very emotional experience. Yeah. Just to say, and as fate would have it, uh -huh. that was the first time that they saw me on TV. Really? With Miss Black America pageant. The family in Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it was um. Very fine memories. Mm -hmm. Very fine memories. Golden memories. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I got I, like I got a chance to travel. Uh, my parents were from Sumter, South Carolina. Okay. Okay. And while I was working as a principal, uh, in uh, I was living in Columbia, but I worked in Bamberg. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, so right. yeah, so I used to, when, uh, uh, when, when I'm in Bamberg, I used to travel, travel back to something to see the house that, that my mom and my parents lived in. in. Mm -hmm. I, I never, never did because they tore it down by then, but it was, it was a good, good experience for me to right. see that. Yeah. So, so what, what what are you doing now? Let's just talk about some, some of the things, things that, that you're doing. doing. Well, well, first, first of all, let's, let's talk, talk about, about your family. Because you came from a musical, musical family. Yeah. Okay. Um, moms, moms and pops, pops quite, quite nasty, nasty all the group. Yeah. And yeah. pops, pops played, played tenor sax. And uh, moms sang gospel. Sang gospel. And, gospel. and they basically put, put their, their careers, careers on hold. You know, they raised us. And their spirit, spirit their yeah, light shined through us. You know, carries me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, mean, I mean, Pop could glow. He could glow. And my yeah. mom could glow. He used to, um, Lee Morgan, Morgan with now trumpet, trumpet player. player. Okay. He used to roll to South Philly. One, one of the bars that he would come, come and blow Pop would sit in. Okay. And then blow this one. Mm -hmm. And mom just recorded, um, some, some stuff with the choir, war singers. singers. Where, you know, yeah. where are we now back in the day? Yes. And our sister Pat. Was the, the yes, she was a vocalist with the Eddie Ellis Jazz Quartet. Yes. Oh, so we go and there's music all around. All around. All the time. I can I remember, remember with Crystal Clarity at five, five years old. Uh -huh. Pop's playing Take, Take Five by Dave Brubeck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and at five, five years old, old I'm yeah. singing it. You know, so yeah. that, that, that early, um, and our growth is when 
we got familiar with just a plethora of different genres of music and our appreciation by the time we began to sing and grow. You know, so we were doing Sad Dow, Moonlight in Vermont, you know, a lot of jazz standards. To be such young guys. Cabaret, you know, Top Bats, Canes. And that's something that I feel very strongly is missing element with a lot of these young performers today, not, not to bash anybody, anybody, but they don't invest the time to learn the craft mm -hmm. and how to entertain. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you understand what I mean? Frank Beverly likes to say, you know, these young artists can put it down, but they don't know how to, don't know how to pimp, pimp the mic. The mic. <laughs> you know, and, and to a large extent, that's true. true. Okay. Go, this sound is too much, much today, thanks. Um, so check it out, I'm sorry. No problem. But, but, um, yeah, yeah you know, so, so that, 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 that was, was how, how it started for us, at home. Okay, okay. And then, um, so your family was all, they were all ready into music, and you and Ty uh, got into music. And mm -hmm. how did you two, I mean, at what age did you start saying, let's get together and form wow. this duo? Well, Ty was my compass. You know, and he still is. You know, uh -huh. to this day, he's my compass. Uh -huh. He um, he started singing, and hooked up with a little neighborhood quartet. <laughs> okay. He must have been maybe ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and no, no, no. At six years old, my little, my first little sweetie. I was so shy. Oh yeah, sweetie at six. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I be, you know. Okay. And I was so shy that I couldn't muster up the nerve to talk to her, so I would sing under her window. Oh wow. Right. Okay. And <laughs> read the comments, go. Her brother would bribe me. I would have to give this cat a box of Good and Plenty's or some Mike and Ikes. Uh huh. <laughs> Mike and Ikes. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Okay. No, I'll, unless you, you really give me some Mikey me. Axel, you know, some, I ain't gonna let you sing in front of our window. So that's when my desire to, to, to sing really started to, you know, blossom. Okay. And then just following Ty, by the time I was 10, I was just learning how to harmonize okay. and sing on my note. Okay. And we did our first professional gig at 12, I was 12 years old at the Delphi Ballroom in West Philly. Delphi Ballroom, yeah, yep. yeah. And God so bless him, may he rest in peace. Fred Cohen, oh, okay. um, he he was in a group when they had a, a hit song on Swan Records called Woman is a Man's Best Friend. Okay. So Fred was the big dog in the community. <laughs> but he saw something in us. Yes. Was tired myself, a brother named Nasir, his brother Vendel and Wilbur Piggy Burrell, the five of us, we were a little okay. quintet. Okay, okay. And as the next year or two unfolded, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it became blatant, you know, obvious to us, these guys aren't as serious as we yeah. are. Yeah, you have to have someone that, you know, feels the passion like you do. Yeah. And we moved out the neighborhood and Tyler and I would walk sometimes from 4th Street all the way back up to 24th Street mm. to rehearse. <laughs> and after 45 minutes, well, man, I got to leave rehearsal because I, I promised my girl I'd take yeah, her to the movies. Yeah, well, yeah. man, I got to leave rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we was, wait a minute now. <laughs> we don't walk all the way up here. You know, <laughs> so he got frustrated, and he said, man, I don't want to do this no more. Okay. I begged him. I said, let's find some new guys. He said, no, no, I don't want to do this no more. And... Sam and Dave came on the radio. Okay. You don't know like I know. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute, Sam and Dave. All right. It's only two of these mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. Right? Two. The Righteous Brothers came yes. out. You know, yes. that time. Yes. Only two of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, hmm. Hall and Oates. So, no, this was way before Hall and Oates. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. So okay. I, I figured, well, let me put the, the big squeeze on Todd. Mm -hmm. She knew that. I said, Ty, listen, man, if they can do it, it's just two of them. Yes. Why can't we do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
Sam and Dave, you know, started, started Sam and Dave, yeah. Inspiration, that's, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what set us off as a duo. And how old were you two then? So, I was uh, 14. Oh, you're still real young. 15. Yeah. Todd was maybe 16 or 17. Mm-hmm. And okay. we, we never looked back. You were doing doo-wop before too, right? Yeah, we, we were doo-wopping with the quartets and the quintets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's where we really cut our teeth. Mm-hmm. Okay. But as I said, they weren't nowhere near as dedicated as he and I. You know, one thing that I, I so miss and very much appreciate about the, the old days is the, the dedication that we have. You know, when I look back in retrospect, it was healthy competition. Right. Unlike a lot of these beefs. Yeah. You know, in South Philly? Ooh. 50 Cent, you know, he got a beef with Jay-Z. You know, this young cat got a beef with this guy. It wasn't none of that. You know, we had a, a crew of young artists in our age bracket. All of us were young. We were developing our craft and, you know, as Italian would say, making our bones, mm-hmm. chasing our dreams, but we supported each you other. supported right. each mm-hmm. other, and you wanted to do this. Exactly. You wanted to do it. Yeah. And no I thank God to this it. day, mm-hmm. Ty and I still got some good relations. So many of us are no longer here. Mm-hmm. But those who still are, you know, I want to give a quick shout out. Shout out Covey St. Charles, uh, Larry Davis, Porky, Russell Dabney, you know, oh, the, the, the Kings. Russell Dabney. Mm-hmm. From Gypsy Lane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know, Harry Miller, Harry Moon, he just passed away. Okay. Rest in peace, my brother. Um, Pat and the Blenders. Mm-hmm. Just a nice little crew, man. And we would challenge each other, you know. So mm-hmm. as our skills developed, we began to, you know, make a lot more progress. As y'all probably know, that's the yeah. Gypsy Lane is playing yeah. all those, on all those hit records for the village people. Mm-hmm. And the Richie family, you know, yeah, Cubby family, went on. I yeah. You know, cut several records on his own. Well, see, you I know. think I think back then we had va- values yes. and morals, okay? And we wanted it so bad that we wanted to just focus on our craft, mm. okay? No time for foolishness. We wanted it so. And so when I look back at the groups and, you know, all the groups that were around me, I can honestly say a lot of the girls that were with me, they didn't want it as bad as I did. Okay? So you can relate to what I'm saying. Yeah, they didn't yeah. want it. You know, they they had so much to do, and they, you know, it just wasn't the, it, it wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. Okay? It was a fan to be and they front. And right. they were more talented. You know, they were more mm-hmm. talented, but they didn't want it. You know, right. they just... They didn't have the, the dedication no. that you had. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I understand exactly mm-hmm. what you're saying. Golden times, man, you know. And, you know, as we grew older, we worked some of the, you know, the same John Howe and the Blue Notes, you know, yeah. Frankie Beverly, and, well, they were raw soul then. Yeah. yeah. Um, intruders, Delphonics, yeah. you know, Kaboo Kab- on 52nd Street. Mm-hmm. And Ty and I, man, we, wow. Well, that's great. That's great that you yeah. two had the opportunity to work with each other, what, for 40, 40 years? Uh, 48 years. 48 years? 48 year run together. That's Isn't that? Run. Yes, yeah, let's give run. him applause for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You. Well, you know, um, when I was reading about you, because a lot of stuff I didn't know, so I'm saying, ho, ho, ho. But your theme song, mm. you know, Stop the Violence. Yes. How did, did, did you and Ty write that? Uh, Ty and I did write that in association with the brother who was uh, the musical director for our band at the time, Kenny Diggs. Kenny Diggs, okay. Yeah, got to give Kenny okay. his, you know, his props okay. as well. Okay, Ken, good job, Kenny. Good job. Mm-hmm. Okay, and how did that come about? Um, unfortunately, it was inspired by a tragedy that happened to my son, Abdul. Oh. He, he went to see this young lady out of North Philly and was jacked, attempted carjacking, and um, was pistol whipped. Hmm. Okay. How old was he at the time? I think he was um, 19 at the time, yeah. I believe, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's a good song. Okay. Thank you. I listened to it, and it's, it's still going on today. 
you know, and, and stop them, stop the violence. It's worse today. Stop the violence is still something that we should, and I know we do mm -hmm. say it. Yeah. And but that's something that should always be said. Stop the violence, because mm -hmm. it's probably worse now than ever. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, it's eerie that I'm doing this interview with y'all today uh -huh. and talking about this because. Early this morning, as I had mentioned to you earlier, a young brother was shot to death mm -hmm. in South Philly mm -hmm. on the same corner mm -hmm. where all of this started for me and time, right on the corner of 24th and Federal. That's where we would congregate and do up. Mm -hmm. It's kids. Mm -hmm. And quite naturally, you know, our hearts and sentiments go out to the family, but I want to give props to Norman Best, his late wife, Ella, Harold McKendrick and their crew, because basically they're taking the baton. Ty and I were on the front line with this movement for 23 years. Mm. Okay. Mm. And they formed an organization called Don't Shoot, I Want a Future. Oh, I Want wow. a Future. I Want to yeah. Live, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they just do a, a wealth of events for the kids. It's very inspiring, very inspiring. Mm. And they would call us, you know, and we would, you know, come out to some of the events, you know, whenever time and circumstances mm. permit. But it's, it's just a plague nowadays, man. You know, you, you, you can hardly go anywhere and feel safe, sadly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it somewhere that, is this um, a stop the violence? Is it on social media? Can it be done? Oh, yeah. There? It is. Right? We got a plethora of that stuff on social media. Mm -hmm. yeah, that one is our theme. People, page. people is our battle cry. Right. You know, but stop the violence and still will always be our thing. Can, so. can people find this association, mm. this affiliation on Facebook? Like you got your own oh, Facebook yeah, page? not only on Facebook, but all, all, oh, all of our media. CDs are, are available on most digital outlets mm -hmm. as well. Uh -huh. CD Baby, Amazon, iTunes, right. you know, so forth and so on. But I was so thinking more of the organization. Um, we basically shut the movement down. Okay. Oh. A long story short. Okay. As I said, we were on the front line with this, this move for 23 years, mm -hmm. internationally. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? We did it. Uh, first stop was in London, like I told you. Then yes, Tony yes, brought yes. us to the Middle East. Uh, we did two tours in the Middle East with Tony mm -hmm. Jones. Tony, Tony Jones, right. TNT. TNT. Mm -hmm. But after we moved to Atlanta, we hooked up with an organization called Victory Over Violence. Mm -hmm. which was started by Brother Fred Watson. May he rest in peace. Okay. Sadly, his story, he was Jack in Washington, D.C., robbed, shot in the head, and left for dead. Oh, God. By the grace of God, he survived and had to learn how to walk and talk all over again. After he healed to a certain point, he felt inspired to start Victory Over Violence. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for a theme song. Okay. And he heard Stop the Violence on the radio on one of the stations in Atlanta and flipped. Who okay. Called a radio All station. Right. Who are these guys? You know, mm -hmm. group from Philly, and he got in touch. And that's really who brought us to Atlanta for the first mm -hmm. time. Keep in mind now, we were commuting back and forth to Atlanta forth. for 10 years mm. already mm -hmm. before we made the move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did a nice, he set the table for us to bring the band down there in 96 for the Olympics. And uh, we hired Tony as a musical director. Tony Jones. Tony Jones. Okay. Tony's again. <laughs> and the first gig right. we did, yes. Frankie Beverly's and Mazes, one of their managers' associates was passing our stage. Mm -hmm. Just as we were coming, we used to open and close our show with Stop the Violence. And the transition from Stop the Violence used to go right into Southern Girl. Okay, Southern oh, Girl by Frankie okay. Beverly. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And that manager's assistant was walking right by our stage. <laughs> I kid you not. Just as Tony directed the band, boom, wop. Okay. And we stopped in his tracks. They were looking for a band to open for P Funk okay. at a club this guy owned back in Alabama. <laughs> All right. Where he's from. Here again, this is how the creator puts you. I know. Mm -hmm. And certain know. places at certain times. That's right. You understand? Yes. But it never came to fruition. Three days after that, 
is when the bomb went off. In Atlanta. When oh, that bomb that went off during the Olympics. Okay, yes, yes. That happened three blocks from the stage we was on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Less than 30 minutes after we closed the show with Stop the Violence. We heard the explosion. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, Abdul... He was doing part-time security at one of the sites and decided not to go to work that day. Mm. And that's the site where he was working. So here again, God saved him, you know, yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. it was very, very upsetting all the time and effort that we put in there, you know, for this tour. Because mm. other than Boys to Men, we were the only Philly-based group down there. Mm -hmm. To this day, you know, that, that blows my mind. But one of the cats in the band said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, man. Maybe this is why we came down here. Right. Right. Because right. suppose we weren't here, your right. son wouldn't went to work. Right. Yeah. And right. who knows, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just from a spiritual perspective, you know, I, I thank God every day for all the blessings, you know, the yes. angels that he keeps yes. around us. Yes. yes. Um, and that's the end of my commercial, you know, on all <laughs> no, that. No, but I, and I, I get you stuff, man, you know, uh, when honest, I, We understand that. And, um, but let's, let's take a break and let's, now, let's say hello to some of the people that join in, okay? Doris. Yes. Before you do that. Yes. Say thank you to the people that followed you. Oh, I was going to do that. I'm sorry. I'm That's okay. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. I was going to do that. But let's take and um, Matt Green. Can you read? You want me to read it? Can you see? Matt sure. Green. Okay. Okay. Hey, Matt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in, brother. Matt and, uh, and Rosa and, always, and Rosa. Okay. They always join in. Thank you guys so very much. Okay. And Matt is saying hi, Doris, Gil, and Al. Okay. Appreciate you. Harfez, another one, always joining. Thank yeah. you so much, Harfez. Yes. Mm -hmm. And DJ in the show, Matt said, how is the sound? I think that's been taken care of. Yeah. Okay. I and uh, Carlos is saying. Brother Carlos. The sound is too much delay effects. He's still saying that. Yeah, we corrected that. Okay. All right. Harfez said, good evening, Doris, Gil, and your guests. I'm watching. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat, for joining in. Thank you, Carlos. It's much better. Shirley Carter, Carter says mm. hello. Thank you, Shirley. And how about now, DJ, how about now? How about now, Carl Israel? What does that mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Matt mm. Green, it sounds like you're in a tunnel, but I can understand what they're saying. Okay, okay, thanks. Good evening. Shirley Carter is saying good evening. Matt is saying much better now. Ron Taylor joined in and said, Good evening, Doris and Al. Good to see you both and enjoying the show. Awesome. Eddie Holman joined in. Oh, my brother. <laughs> yes, Eddie Holman joined in. Uh, you said you go a long way back. Hi, Eddie. Way back. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Marty. Holman. Marty Gibbs. What's up, Marty? Marty Gibbs. Yeah, man. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Hard more in the house. Okay. Um, my friend from... Um, from West Virginia when I was a principal there. Yeah. Okay, Barbara Berger. All right. Uh, thank All right. you for joining in, Barbara. Mike Jones Jones joined in. Hey thank Mike. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so now this is what Eddie's saying. E everyone, Al we go back. Remember that New Year's gig we did in Baltimore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to drive home because yeah, I was, was so busy drunk. drunk. I'm yep. Drinking <laughs> champagne that night night oh before. My God. You had to drive home there. But yep. thank you for driving Eddie home. <laughs> <laughs> you got to thank the travel agents for that one. Cause I was slightly tilted myself. Oh, too. my goodness. Where, where in Baltimore was it? Oh, man. Don't get me to lie, though. Okay. So I came from, it, <laughs> it I was lived at, in Baltimore, too. I lived it was all over. A, okay. One of the swank hotels down there. Okay. Sandy, my sister, joined. Thank wow. you so much for joining, Sandy. Hi, Doris. Glad to be with you guys tonight. Glad to have you with us, Barbara. Sandy, hello, Doris. Matt Green. The Chestnut Brothers were part of the golden era of talent in Philly. I heard of them when I was in junior high from my late friend Jeff Hodges, who went to Bach. Oh, my gosh. Bach. Hey. Yeah. Bach Go to Bach and be yeah. okay. Yeah. Get your be tray, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Rosa Richardson. Hi, Rosa. Thank you so much for joining. Carla says, tell my man, Al, let me get that hat. He wants your hat. <laughs> Al goes back to the good old days. Everyone he named are my, oh my people. Al Chestnut came from a long way and is still standing strong. He sings his butt off. He came to the top of sh top shelf and sang with my band. They loved him. He says, mm -hmm. so I'll go back. And Dana Harrell. Diana, it's our sister. Diana. Hey, Diana. Is that your, your sister? Spiritual sister. Oh, spirit. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Diana. Blessings to the Chestnut Brothers, and thank you for this interview. And, and I thank them for coming to this interview, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is That's that, beautiful. Is that, uh, okay. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for, thank for, for you tuning so much. in. And thank you, guys. Like Gilbert said, I was going to say it, for following me over from my personal page to my business page. We will be airing from my business page from this day forward, hopefully. Yep. And I want to thank you for your continued support of the Indie Show. Okay, now let's go into, let's talk about um, your solo career. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's talk about that for a moment. Well, I got the green light from Todd now to... Um, take the wraps off, off of the, the, the reality of, of really was responsible for that. Um, after we moved to Atlanta, I think it was the fourth or fifth year we were down there. Mm -hmm. Ty had a stroke. Mm. Okay. December 27th. And uh, by the grace of God, he had the stroke in his sleep. By the grace of God, you know, he woke up. I was able, you know, to, to get him to the hospital. And that was the, the really the start of the, the initial seeds, mm -hmm. you know, for me to start flying solo. It took two and a half years for me to just come to grips with this. Because he and I are so connected. Even though through the years, you know, I would do individual stuff, most notably, the run I did with the Miss Black America pageant back in 77, 78. Went out to LA for the first time um, here at the old convention center. Yeah, okay. Right. And okay. Um, the third time in Washington, D.C. And with freelance with certain bands on the time, Ty wanted to take two years off just okay. to develop his guitar skills and the, his production skills, which is at the time when he and I really got serious about writing and producing our music. Okay. Okay. So, after he had the stroke, and I was emotionally stable enough, because I was ready to hang it up. Mm. Seriously, so many people was coming at me, well, man, you gotta, why don't you keep it going and, yeah. you know, hook up with someone else to replace Ty. Can't nobody replace Ty. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, to this day, that, that, that it right. just never happened. But um, we decided, okay, we've traveled the world doing these message songs, you know, being community, uh, committed to community service initiatives. Why don't we shift the spotlight on a love song? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we had collaborated with Bobby Eli okay. on a couple songs, one of which was Touch Me in a Special Way, which me, we originally wrote with The Temptations in mind. Okay. <laughs> featuring Ron Tyson. Uh -huh. Okay. But we just couldn't get it to the temps. Mm -hmm. And the, the demo just sat there for years, so we figured we'd dust that off. And that was my first and solo single. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think, think it turned out pretty well. And you can get that one online too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, Touch me in a special way. Touch me in a special way. Yeah. So we can go online and we can get that. And those mm -hmm. of you that's not familiar with that particular tune, go online and it can be purchased, downloaded and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most digital outlets. Okay. So now, now you're continuing on that road as being a solo artist. Okay. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. That's well. That's what you want to do? I'll, it's just too much a part of who I am. You know, not to. Not you know, to, I, right. I've had it's some like health issues. 
some mm-hmm. health issues myself, mm-hmm. which um, I had to put everything on hold for a couple of years. You mm-hmm. know, I had a major surgery, and I'm slowly working myself back into shape. Um, so now and then, you know, I'll pop up and sit in, you know, like I did with Shirley Lights and, mm-hmm. and her crew at the top show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just want to give props to, you know, some of those artists who still support us. You know, Kenny Jackson, Johnny Croom, uh, <laughs> Stacy McGee, you know, yeah. quite naturally, you know, the UGO family. Right. Who afford us, you know, afford me an opportunity. Carlos is in there too. Yeah, you know, Bill Jolly, you know, mm-hmm. and, and the crew with the Grand Slam band, mm-hmm. you know. With Brett. Yeah, with Brett mm-hmm. and uh, Pamela, you know, yeah, Nick Smith. There, mm-hmm. yeah. So the, these are hits, you know, that I do periodically just to sing. Okay. But um, I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to give major, 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 major props to our longtime co-producer and chief engineer, Paul Wycliffe, okay. Skyline Productions. Mm-hmm. He had uh, I can't even find the words. You know, we did our first project in 1987, mm-hmm. and he's still riding with us to this very day. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't yeah. that one? Grammy back. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Five-time Grammy-nominated engineer. Mm-hmm. You know, his lovely wife. I got to give props to his wife, Rosanna Vitro, also. Mm-hmm. She invited me to do a duet on her previous CD. Okay. You know, tell me the truth. She and I did a wicked duet <laughs> of the stable you singers. Get that, yeah. Respect yourself. Respect okay. yourself. All right. With a jazz spin on it, you know. Okay. So We need to... Yeah, Rosanna Vitro. Yeah. Tell me the truth. You know that's available as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ro. (laughs) (laughs) Love you, girl. You know. Okay. You know they're like family to us. You know Mm -hmm. the the beautiful daughter Sarah. You know we came up to New York when she got married. You know we've known her since she was this this high, and now she's a beautiful young lady with her family. Just had her first child. You know, so we got a great great support network, and um. Mm-hmm. Can I throw something in? Uh, three, about three, four, no, about four or five years ago, Doris and I got invited by my sister Janine to come out to Ardmore, right? Ardmore had um, uh, a festival. A Unity Day. Unity Day, mm-hmm. right. Buddy Sigler was there for That's that right. day. That's right. And you and your brother were killing it, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. And I tried to talk to them. I think, were we doing this indie show? They didn't, they didn't know you. No, they didn't know me, and they didn't, they kind of brushed me off. And all kind of, no, no, I, 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 I didn't brush y'all off. Yes, you did. Oh, right. Yeah, but you brought up a good thing. That's okay. brushed me off. But you know, I said, well, yeah, she ain't gonna let me off the hook. Yeah, I said, right? let me tell you, I'll be back. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get him. I'll get him. Yeah, I remember that. Mm. But it was a nice, it was a nice Very affair. Nice although affair. you brushed mm. me off, it's yeah. a nice affair. And um, Bunny Sigler was there, and. Alfie Brett was there too. Brett was there too, right? was there too wasn't he? Yeah, he said. Well, Brett and the band were the house band that day. Right. Yeah. Okay. And actually, Bunny was was supposed to close the show, and Marty Gibbs. Yeah. Marty Gibbs and Marty my Gibbs brother. Gibbs he said, there. "No, no, 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 no. We insist that you close the show." I said, "Marty, with all due respect, <laughs> Bunny, you know, is still the cat. Yeah. You know, I respect that. Yeah. You know, he's one of my OGs." Mm-hmm. So no, 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 no. But <laughs> here again, got to give Marty additional props because mm-hmm. this song touched me in a special way. Mm-hmm. Long story short, was a merger of my son's label, AE Music Group, with Marty's label, Rebel Hill. Okay, okay. With Warner Music Group. Rebel Hill, that's Marty's label. Yeah. yeah. So, so your, son had, your son has a record label also? Yeah. Um... Marty and us have a mutual associate in Atlanta. Okay. Glow Hunter. Okay. And Glow told us about Marty. So after the first initial conversations and finding out he had that connect with Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. I said, well, my son is still trying to launch his label. Would you be interested in doing a merger? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was good. So that's how we connected those dots. Okay. You know. And... um. His first project was a CD that he put out for Tony Jones' daughter. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Latrice. Latrice. Tony brought Tyron over and I over to Bahrain for an eight-week run. Mm -hmm. Boy, Tony, man, wow. <laughs> He's something, isn't he? <laughs> As our brother from another mother. Yes, 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 yes. You understand? Yeah. He's yeah. still playing and he's yeah. got his health issues, but he's Listen. still rolling too. When I had my surgery, mm. Tony insisted that he be the one to pick me up and take me to the hospital. Mm. Okay. And he be the one to bring me home. Right. Now, mind you, I was in the hospital three weeks. And another fourth week in rehab, he took me to the hospital, came to the rehab joint, picked me up, and brought me home. All right. Well, we want to get a I still get out, out to tell you. Uh, okay. So that that's you know right. then that commercial. Not to mention he plays the dog oh, shit. Oh man, on the listen. Bass. And that <laughs> bass he had custom made with the, 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 the two bases. The yeah, one two bases, something. Yeah. And props to Tony for. Our battle cry of the people, which he wrote. And that's, I, I want to see if that can. Look, it's in there. It. It's I in know. here. It's in this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's the last one. It is. It is. Yep. Can hold it where they can see it. Uh oh. There you go. Okay. No glare. No glare. Okay. You can he see it? Can y'all see it? And this was <laughs> this was written by Tony Jones. Tony, what, did he produce it too? Who no, produced it? we produced it. You produced it. You guys produced it. Tony he played this for us in his hotel room mm -hmm. when we were in Istanbul. Okay. Okay. And Ty and I were so blown away by the demo, mm -hmm. we tried to convince him to yeah. record it himself. Yeah. Okay. He refused. He said, man, I wrote this song with you guys in mind. Because it ties right in with your mm -hmm. peace message and world world peace and stop the violence. Mm -hmm. can, I sh can I show these? Yeah. Okay. So we did from here, and this is Stop the Violence, right? That's the Dirty South remix. Dirty South remix. Yeah. Okay. okay. So What's stop the, the difference? Violence. The difference yeah. is the original version is on the Peace Sweet CD. Okay. okay. This is a remix of that. Well, a, a, yeah. Okay. A so, remake. So the, re, the, the, the original version the, is on the Peace Sweet CD. The original version was on the Peace Sweet. Yes. And then this and, is the um, remix, right? Yeah. And um, okay. we have a third version that is available online, but we have not yet really started heavily promoting it. Okay. The Universal Remix, which features one of Bob Marley's granddaughters. Okay. okay. So that one has a reggae type mm. slash ska type vibe to it. But it's available also. This is traveling on. That to, to this day, Ty and I feel that's the best song that we've ever written. Our sister co-wrote that one with us. Donnie Hathaway wanted to record this song. Yeah, we were blessed to meet Donnie and um, let him hear some of our songs. And when he mm -hmm. heard that one, that made him cry. Man, I want to, I want to, I'm going to put this in my show. I'm going to take it on the road mm -hmm. for about six months. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put it on my next record. Okay. Step back okay. for a second. Is that the one piece? Uh, yeah. Where? Yeah, That's piece it right there, yeah. Piece Yes. Okay. Traveling On is on that also, even though Traveling On blew up so big for us internationally, mm -hmm. we released it as a single okay. after that. So what else you got in here? And then he has... The, the That's the remake. That's a remake. Of um, Whole Lot of You and Me. Yeah. The original version was the one we did. I, I listened to this the other day, I think. Okay. That, the original version featured yeah, Grover Washington is, Jr. Yeah. This is the remake of that. Okay. And Grover... Okay had agreed to play on this. I talked to him the day before. Mm -hmm. The last time I talked to him, the next day w w was when he, he had his heart attack and passed away. Mm. Nothing guaranteed, bro. So Donnie passed away before he got a chance to record yeah. Traveling On. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we were not blessed to have Grover on, on this remake of A Whole Lot of You and Me. How about this one? Girls. That's... um. My son calls that the international female <laughs> theme. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> How to be okay. a player. Huh? Well, okay. not necessarily. We're giving props to girls. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. okay I got a couple more, so I um, just want to go through. Let me throw this one up here. Which one do you have? Right. 
Oh, that's what I was going to do too. Okay. That's the last. <laughs> the um, well, you don't have to pull up because they, they, they know, can see that. I'm just putting it up. Cause that's the know. Retro Soul mm -hmm. album, which yeah. is the last one that Ty and I did. You know, mm -hmm. before he, he had a stroke. When was this one? And this one? Uh, 2008. Okay. And this is, did you put this one up? No, I didn't have a copy of it. Okay, and I have it in the wrong, but. Touch this Me is, in a Special Way. Th this is Touch Me, and this is your solo? Yeah, solo, solo single. Single here. Touch Me in a Special Way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, and the Brotherly Love album, you know, somewhere between all of those, yeah. as well as the Missing Links album we did with Victor Bailey. But you know, with all these CDs, mm -hmm. uh, you had a fantastic, or have a fantastic career. Thank you. You know? And it's still, you're continuing to move forward um, towards your musical journey. Because this is just half of what you're going to do. Okay? Well, hopefully so, no, you no, know. No, 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 not hopefully. You're okay. going to do it, okay? You know, you got it together, and we give credit to the man above, mm -hmm. and he's going to... Oh, he gets all, you, he, all the problems. Yeah, he's going to yeah. move you through. You know, you're still talented. Are you still writing songs? Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, Tony's working on his new record, and um, he wants to feature one of our songs on his record. Okay. okay. And with God's blessings, mm -hmm. we'll be able to enlist the talents of someone who... As far as I'm concerned, it's criminally unsung. Carol Riddick. Okay. I let Carol hear the song last week. <laughs> she really likes it. So okay. we're going to see, you know, what comes out of that. Okay. And um, Paul Wickliffe, our co-producer, wants to do a new album. Mm. And see? we already talked to, you know, the big dog and UGO, Henry. Okay. Mm -hmm. have him and his crew. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, several up the tracks. Mm -hmm. Not most of the tracks, you know, for that one. So, I'm, you know, we got some really exciting stuff on the horizon. I want to mention the fact that my son, Abdul, is, had just launched his company, XOD, Experience on Demand, which is a streaming company, mm -hmm. you know, similar to mm -hmm. um, Netflix, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. What's the name of that? Say that again. XOD, Experience X on Demand. Okay. okay. Yeah, him and some of his crew down in Atlanta. They're launching that globally. And um, we connected some dots with some people out in California you know, mm. as well. So hopefully me and Ty will start being able to, you know, to do some traveling, you know, shortly. Because I'm, I'm just so itchy, you know, to, <laughs> yeah. to get back on the road, man. But we, we got to wait okay. on the pier. <laughs> yes. You know, when it's time, everything, you know, will come to fruition. Yes. Meanwhile, you know, I give thanks for people like you and Gil. Yeah. You know, for We're here all, you know, every <laughs> week bringing on... Um, us a chance you know, bringing on the best artists. You know, we're bringing you on there you guys, go. and we want to thank you for everything you've done for Philadelphia and the whole world. And <laughs> we want you to, we want them to know. They said, "Well, why do you do it? You, d I, we do it because we know we want you to know what these guys and gals has done for our music." Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also want to give some shout outs, also. Okay. To some of the organizations right that we work with, okay. when we were pushing to stop the violence movement, um, Mothers in Charge, mm -hmm. Men United for Better Philadelphia, okay. um, Operation Safe Streets. You know mm -hmm. when Mayor Street. You know mm -hmm. when he was in the mm -hmm. saddle. Sylvester Johnson when he was the police commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, I would also be remiss if I didn't give props to Brother David Barnes as well. You know, just for hanging in there with our photography work. Okay. Back in the day, okay. and um, Bobby Paulino, you know, a very talented art director. So I, you know, I, I just want to give props to everybody. Yes, <laughs> who've been everybody. riding with us, man. Yes. You know. Yes. But even though we're not healthy enough to put keep boots on the ground at this stage of the game, we're still shining our light. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, but you spirit will always be on the front line mm -hmm. through spirit and song. And you can keep music in the world. Yes. You can still keep that music going, flowing mm -hmm. through, right? Absolutely. Let's take a second and let's go back. I don't know. Let me see where we are. Um, let me see. Um, I think Ron, we did Ron Taylor, right? Mm -hmm. Eddie Holman, we did Barbara, but Mike Jones. Um, okay, so we got them, we got her. Okay, Sandy Sykes, the Chestnut, let's go, Avery Town. 
heard them when I was over. We did that one. Rosa. Yeah, you start with Tony Richards. Okay, let me yeah. see. Tony Richards doing. Right. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony Richards doing. She was on uh, last week. Was last week? Yeah. Okay. Tony yeah. Richards. She's a great singer. And she did a really good interview. Mm. And she's from Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, Jay. East Philly. She's from Camden, New Jersey. <laughs> okay. Carlos, I'll be yeah. shouting him out Tuesday. I'll be okay, shouting Carlos. Out Tuesday night on Let's Go Back show. Carlos has that Let's Go Back show, and it is really a good show. Mm. Right. You know, yeah. it's really a good show, and you can sit back and listen. And he, one thing he does, he finds songs that no one else mm. ever right. heard. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, heard it, but yeah, no, I don't think. Band. Well, they may be. You remember? Remember years ago they used to be B sides. Yeah. Right. You know, mm -hmm. B sides and B sides, but they're really good. good. They're mm -hmm. really good songs. Mm -hmm. okay. He takes his job very serious. It's and good, he brother. Does, right. He does a good job. You got a pocket yeah. on them drums too, man. Yeah, Let's he go does back good. Eight o'clock Tuesday nights mm -hmm. and Saturday. Nights. Little brother well, Stanley Brisbane. Yeah. What's yeah, up, Stanley. little brother? Yeah, hi, Stanley, and Willington still. I have to call. I have to call you. I keep trying to remember. <laughs> but I'll get there next week. And Stanley, hey Stanley. Okay, good evening, Willington. And that's Stanley again. Big brother, love you, brother. Love you too, little okay. bro. Uh, we're gonna go to Shirley. Said, <laughs> love you, brother. Learn so much from Al and Ty. Okay, isn't it heartwarming? Very much ben so. Harfest says, I commend you, brother Al, for keeping the dream alive. I'm in Georgia. Maybe we'll cross path down the road. Peace. God bless. Peace, my brother. Okay. He's a good yep. guy. That's okay. awesome. Okay. Too. Yeah. Our Fez is a songwriter and a producer. Okay. And we play a lot of um, his music on Philly Live Radio. So he does good, I think. All That's awesome. Time. Okay. Now, we want to just go back and talk about uh, um, how can we reach you? If somebody wants to reach you, what's the best yeah. way? Is it? We're not performing. We just want to, you know, just to talk to him because he's not really performing right now. Mm -hmm. But either way, how can we reach you? Uh, chestnutbrothers.com mm -hmm. or chestnutbrothers at gmail.com mm -hmm. is our email address. Okay, okay. As um, far as any potential performances, we're in the process of furthering relations with a really strong management team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to keep that under wraps for the time being. Okay. But meanwhile, through whoa, wait, whoa, Henry McMillian. I pack. You're going to keep it under wraps. I pack. Yeah, I, I have to. You have to? I'm here. You know, in, in a minute, it's going to introduce hey, itself. Pat. Okay. But like I said, it's some really interesting things, you know. Y'all stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay tuned now. Mm -hmm. um, and something else, I would be remiss. Got to give them their props as well. Back in the mid-'80s. Before we worked on the, the Missing Links record, mm -hmm. with Victor Bailey, we connected with Joe Jefferson. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Joe Tarsia. Joe Tarsia. Mm -hmm. We're starting. Yeah, we're starting a production company, and we're looking for acts. And Joe brought us in, mm -hmm. and we you know did some tracks with with him. Um, unfortunately, you know, we weren't able to launch the project. And from the very beginning, Jerry Blavitt. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jerry was the one <laughs> that connected the dots mm -hmm. for tying out to get our first major record label deal with Paramount. Way that was when. great. And oh. he would not accept a dime. No. To this day, when I see him, what's up, little brother? <laughs> That's been 500 years ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> but. You know, you, you appreciate those who helped yeah. you along your journey. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Nobody, none of us can do it, you know, on our own. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And that's a level of humility and appreciation that Ty and I have always kept. Okay. And it's just a part of who we are, you know. So, um, Jerry deserves major prop because mm -hmm. he said, he really set the table for us to launch our thing on an international level. Mm -hmm. Did I get this right? The heater? The heater yeah, with the heater. The heater with the heater. heater. Yeah. <laughs> he heard about us. Um, brought us over, invited us to come to this radio show, okay, and asked us to sing something for him a cappella on the spot, all right, on the radio, okay, and you did, right? We went right in the hole I'm covered by Sammy <laughs> Dave, <laughs> and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm going to be booking these guys as memories <laughs> down in Margate, New Jersey. Yeah. And they're going to make Sam and Dave sound like white boys. And I'm bringing them down there with their bad men. So I looked at each other, holy shit. <laughs> I've some big shoes. Of Sam and Dave, you know, I yeah, mean, they yeah. were in their prime at that yeah. time. But just just a great guy, man. I was able to see Johnny. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, Jerry, Henry invited me to a launch. Um and a new venue here, I've, it's, it's slipping me. But Jerry was there, Joe Piscopo, the Roots, you know, was a lot of key players in the house. As soon as he saw me, what's up, little brother? <laughs> and we hugged and, you know, took some pictures, you know, together. But okay. just some, some golden memories, you know. Mm. I'm probably rambling now, but, you no, know. No, but I mean, it's, it's all good. You it's know, good. and um, it's a lot of, uh, I imagine, lots of people tuning in tonight would like to know how do they how do they get into the music field I mean I know it's hard we know it's hard um, one lesson that time I learned early in our career uh -huh. no one no one will ever believe in your dream as much as you do yes yes mm -hmm. yes you did so mm -hmm. just stay on path don't try to be nobody else but who you are, and just try to shine your light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, keep in mind that we all are put here to serve as angels at various times as we travel our journey, just as there are others who serve as angels for ourselves. I mean, the fact that I'm still here with y'all, right. mm -hmm. right. with what I've been through, you know, the Creator got some angels around me, mm -hmm. and I never allow myself to forget that. I thank Him every day. Yes. As yeah. soon as I wake up, yeah. I thank him every night mm -hmm. when I lay it down. And I want to thank the two of you okay. just for, you know, joining our army of angels. Yes. Yes. And hopefully, you know, we can find a way to be a blessing, you know, to, to y'all as well. Well, you, you are a blessing because you've all these people join in tonight. And uh, they join in to see and hear you, okay, um, and hear your story and some of the things that you know, you went through and how strong you are uh, to continue going. Some people hmm. would have given up. That's true. Uh, but sometimes when it's music or something, when it's your passion, you can't hardly really give it up, you know. And, and that's when you have those transferable skills, you know, that, you know, Ty can write, you know, Ty can produce, you know. And although... Oh, his mind may, is still sharp. Yeah, and although that's, you may not want to... Perform performing is that's hard, you know, because you were telling about the tour you went and over in London you said and yeah you, you did like how many shows every we did um three shows in the UK prior to that we had did a six week run throughout Germany then we did an eight week run in Bahrain and then another eight week run in Cyprus so <clears throat> you were just on that tour bus all the time right that the, the sheesh. <laughs> It, it, everybody's not cut out for it, you know, yeah. and that was the period when our, and may she rest in peace, our sister Pat, uh, she joined the group, and she was with us, you know, for a few years as well. Yeah. So, her her spirit shines upon us, mm -hmm. and um, mom's light, pop's light will always shine through us. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, we're just, just, just special, man, you know, right. so... <clears throat> Just to still be able to do this. Yeah. As I yeah. said, you know, with all I've been through, it's, man, it's it and humbles me. And, and it's, it's, re it's really, I guess, when I think about the things I wanted to do, um, all my life I wanted to sing, but it wasn't meant for me to do that, okay? And sometimes you ask, why? You got this person, this, this, and it's not meant. Maybe it's use a transferable skill, do something mm. else, because it's, the times I was out there, it was so hard, right. you know, on that. And I we used to always be on this bus going from one place to another. This night you're here and this and that. That was really hard. But that's what I'm saying. It's not for everybody. Uh -uh. You know? That was really hard. And so, you know, that's why I want to do something else. You right. know, there's always another way to promote and do things for those who are still in music besides the performing aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And... 
Props to Tom Bell also. Oh, yeah, Tom Bell. Tom Bell signed us. Oh, wow. Long story short, rather than bring us into the Philly International family, mm. Tom had just won Grammy, the Grammy for produ Producer of the Year. Ooh, okay. And this was when he was hot with the Spinners and the Stylics and all yes, that. Yes, yes. Atlanta gave him the opportunity to launch his own label. Mm. And we were supposed to be the act that he was going to, you know. Open with now? Yeah. Okay. okay. But due to some personal issues, he had to relocate out to Pilot, Washington. Yeah. So that's another project that never, you know, came to right. fruition. But mm -hmm. he saw that light in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So big props to you, Brother yeah. Tom. Yeah. We appreciate you. And he's had a hell of a career, hasn't he? Stellar career. I mean, Stellar career. he's just had a career. I was looking online the other day at his credits mm. and <laughs> all the things he's done. Quite and, lengthy. Yes. And Tom is a funny guy too, man. They just, just, yeah. just, just <laughs> you, Tommy heard us. We had, a, we had audition for Kenny Gamble. Mm -hmm. He heard about us through the little gigs we was doing around South Philly. And he's man, man, I really did you, Cass, but, but <laughs> you're just too young. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, no, seriously, I was 14. Tom was 16. Mm -hmm. Guy we knew, knew, knew Tom Bell. Mm -hmm. So we told him what happened. He said, "Don't worry about it." I got somebody else I want to hear, y'all. Mm. He sets up all this with Tom Bell. Same thing. Man, you, I love you guys, but you're too young. Come back and see me in about 10 years. Oh. 10 years. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> Do you know we came back nine years later? Okay. And? Earl Shelton, may he rest in peace, heard a demo of a song we wrote called Sweet Little Rita. Sweet Little Rita. Yeah, which we released as a 12-inch mm -hmm. later on. Okay. To a, label out of Montreal. Okay, sounds familiar. And um, he let Tommy hear the demo. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy liked it. Earl called all excited. Tommy loves loves your song, man. He wants to meet with you guys immediately. They set the meeting up like three days later. We, okay. we, we couldn't believe it. We go down to Philly and that. <laughs> <laughs> we wait to the lobby. Tommy comes out. Oh, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the same two funny-looking guys. <laughs> when well, you told us to come back 10 years later, ten so years we figured we come a year early. You know, and that was the the, the uh, initial development of a wonderful, you know, relationship with time, man. Yes. Well, I look, I, I'm looking at this, and I think your, your brother just came in. The Ty, yeah. Thanks for having my favorite and only brother, Ty Chesson. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for your contribution to the music world. Thank you, guys. It's right side of my heart. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, is there any, you know, it's time to really go, you know, go beats, tell me in a minute, it's time to go. <laughs> time to go. Is there any more shout out, shout outs that you want to say? Oh man, I'm, you know, my, my wheels are just spinning. I'm just trying to remember as many people, you know, as okay. possible. Um, whoever we, we, you know, I, I may have failed to mention, yeah. you know, don't take it personal. Right. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you mm -hmm. uh, knowing who we are. You know, I'm sure you're already aware of that. Mm -hmm. And um, just stay tuned. You know, we got some really interesting and, and stuff, you know, okay. in the cooker. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, next. So, you know, was God next. blessing, you know, we'll, we'll be able to come back out the gate strong. You're going to come back. Okay, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And next week is the 13th, the 13th, uh, February 13th. Uh, we have Tommy Smooth, Tommy, Tommy Smooth, Too comedian. Smooth. Tommy Too Smooth, right. Okay. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Tommy is a comedian. and uh, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we yeah. went to the Wyndham. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we caught his act. He's mm -hmm. fabulous. And uh, I talked to him today. I told him how excited I am, how excited he is. Is coming on the show next week, and he has performed as uh, 21 different characters. Wow! Okay. You know, he okay. changes his character when he. That's performs. cool. Yeah, and he has done a little singing too. And I was talking to him today. He said, "Oh, I don't do any singing." I said, "Oh, yes, you do." And he said, "Oh, yeah, because I had some C uh, CDs and songs." Stuff. I wrote. Mm. I said, "Well, I want to know all that when you come on the show next week." So tune in next week 
for Tommy Smooth, and I want to say Tommy Too Smooth, mm -hmm. and tune in next week. And then I want to say thank you again to you and Ty. Okay, I'll I want to say thank you to the world and Facebook and all you guys that joined in today, and um, hope you join in next week and stay with us and help us keep this. Music and I don't know right. how I forget forgot this. Who? Yesterday was Ty's birthday. Oh, oh happy oh, birthday, Ty! Happy belated birthday yes, to Ty! Yes, yes, yes. And today, mom and pops are shouting down on both of y'all because today is the date of their wedding anniversary. Oh God! Now how special was that? That's real special. I'm sorry, um, pops. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys. Peace, everybody. Thank are you. We done? We're done. All right, let's roll.